Long before biochar became fashionable, wood ash was already a cornerstone of serious food production. If you go back just two or three generations, nearly every rural household produced wood ash daily. It came from cooking fires, heating stoves and bread ovens. None of it was treated as waste. It went straight into gardens, orchards, animal yards and compost heaps. What made this practice powerful was not nostalgia or thrift. It was precision born of observation. Wood ash was applied in ways that corrected soil chemistry, unlocked nutrients and strengthened crops faster than any modern amendment marketed today. Wood ash works immediately because it is already mineralized by fire. Biochar is carbon locked in a stable form, valuable over long timelines but slow to interact. Wood ash is different. Fire has already broken plant material down into mineral salts that plants and microbes can access at once. Potassium, calcium, magnesium and trace minerals are present in forms roots can absorb. This is why ash-fed gardens often respond within weeks rather than seasons. Grandma understood that ash was not soil food. It was soil correction. Now, the forgotten power of ash, you see, lies in its ability to rebalance acidic, exhausted ground. Many soils, over time, become acidic through rainfall, fertilizer use, or even just from crop removal. And, well, acidic soil can actually lock nutrients away, even when they're present right there in the earth. Wood ash, when used properly, gently raises the pH, freeing up phosphorus, calcium and magnesium that were already in the soil, but, you know, just unavailable to plants. Historical farm records, interestingly enough, show that ash was applied after heavy rains or long winters, precisely because acidity increased during those times. This was targeted chemistry, not just guesswork. Grandma, for instance, never spread ash thickly, because, as she used to say, ash is a seasoning, not a meal. One of the reasons ash honestly outperforms biochar is restraint. A light dusting was enough, nothing more. Ash was always scattered by hand, often mixed with soil or compost before application. It was never, ever piled up. This simple practice prevented root burn and nutrient imbalance, keeping everything in harmony. These days, a modern equivalent is, well, sifting cold hardwood ash and applying it thinly across your beds before the rain comes. For vegetable plots, just one small bucket spread over several square meters is really sufficient. Honestly, more is not better. Wood ash actually feeds soil organisms that, you know, biochar must first be conditioned to support. Biochar requires charging with nutrients before it becomes biologically active. Raw biochar, if you're not careful, can temporarily rob the soil of nitrogen. Wood ash does the opposite, though. It stimulates microbial activity by providing minerals that enzymes require. Fungi respond particularly well to ash-treated soils, especially when you pair the ash with organic matter. In historical composting, folks would layer ash with kitchen scraps and manure, which helped prevent odour while also accelerating breakdown. In the old days, ash was used strategically in crop rotation systems, you know, in ways that modern gardeners rarely even think to copy. Root crops and fruiting plants, well, they benefited most from ash because of its potassium content. 
Leafy greens, on the other hand, were fed sparingly to avoid excess alkalinity. This kind of knowledge was passed down through practice, not from manuals or books. Applying ash before planting potatoes, squash, onions or fruit trees, well, it still remains highly effective today. The method is simple, really. You just apply ash to bare soil, lightly rake it in, then water or wait for rain before planting. The disease resistance effect of ash is rarely discussed these days, but it was historically well known. Plants grown in mineral balanced soil develop thicker cell walls and stronger immune responses. Wood ash, in particular, contributes calcium and potassium, both of which are critical for disease resistance. In orchard systems, ash was spread beneath trees to reduce fungal pressure and fruit rot. Ash-treated soils, you know, drain better, warm faster and resist compaction, all of which reduce disease conditions. The reason biochar feels impressive is longevity, but ash delivers impact when it matters most. Biochar excels as a long-term carbon scaffold. Ash excels as a corrective tool. Grandma did not need decades of soil conditioning. She needed crops to survive that season. Ash addressed immediate deficiencies caused by harvest, weather or soil fatigue. Used seasonally rather than continuously, ash remains one of the fastest soil interventions available. You know, modern gardeners often fail with ash because, well, they apply it without considering the context. Ash should never be used on soils that are already alkaline. And, uh, it shouldn't be applied repeatedly in the same spot year after year. Oh, and it should never come into direct contact with seedlings. Historically, folks just followed these rules by instinct. These days, though, a simple soil test, or just watching how your plants respond, can help prevent misuse. If you notice yellowing leaves, stunted growth, or poor flowering, that's often a sign of mineral imbalance. Something ash can help correct when it's applied lightly. Now, the greatest advantage of wood ash, really, is that it closes a nutrient loop that, well, modern systems often leave open. The burned wood, you see, came from the land and then returned to it. Nothing was imported, and honestly, nothing was wasted. This closed-loop fertility system, it's actually why small homesteads manage to stay productive for generations without any external inputs. Biochar, sure, it often enters the system as a purchased product these days. But ash, well, ash is already present for anyone using wood heat or, you know, cooking fuel. What makes this method endure, in truth, is not tradition, but results. Wood ash works because it respects soil chemistry, biological timing, and importantly, restraint. It corrects rather than overwhelms. It feeds rather than dominates. It delivers visible results, and you don't have to wait ages to see them. If you value grounded, historically proven methods that actually work in real soil, then, you know, subscribe to Botanical Bliss, share this guide with fellow growers and survival-focused gardeners, and help preserve the quiet knowledge that kept generations fed long before modern products arrived.